Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Things First. Ooh, we got the little holiday open. Feels good. It feels festive. Jenna Wolf, Nick Wright, Chris Broussard in for Brandon. A little under the weather today. Kevin Wilds is here. And we are setting ourselves up for a Kevin Wilds weekend of football to discuss. Yes, Nick Wright. Oh, I was I didn't know we were setting ourselves up for a Kevin Wilds weekend, but while my camera gets I know, adjusted, I, I, I just want to say to America, once again, what do we do on the show, Jenna? We give out winners over Thursday night football. Pay everyone our money. Just giving out winners. Oh, there just giving out gambling winners. That's all we do. I know I know Fox Bet Live thinks that's their corner. No, no, no. That's the first things first corner. We don't give out a lot, but they're all winners, Jenna. That's what we do. That's all. Chris, That's all I'm, I'm sorry you had to sit and hear all of that. Because you're Why? here, let Why us wait on that winner. Let us get right to basketball. Yeah. We got to start this morning with James Harden again, because as of this morning, he is still a Houston Rocket. Yesterday, it was reported that the Sixers made Ben Simmons available in some trade packages. So let's go. Let's make a deal, Monty Hall. But literally an hour after that report, this from Sixers president Daryl Morey, quote, we are not trading Ben Simmons. He is an important part of our future. <laughs> Chris Broussard, what do you think? Sixers making a, a big mistake not including Ben Simmons in a deal for Harden? Look, I totally get the idea of wanting to see Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid together under a new coach outside of Brett Brown, especially a championship coach like Doc Rivers. In fact, I have been saying that over a year ago that that should be the Sixers' plan. However, if James Harden is available, that has to be more becoming a win-now league. And as good as Ben Simmons is, to think that you're going to win a championship with a guy that not only can't shoot, but won't shoot. And it's been three years now, and he has made yep. minuscule progress in terms of his willingness to take jump shots. 20 years ago, maybe even 10 years ago, that would have been fine. But now, your primary ball handler, I don't think he can be a guy that won't take jump shots. Milwaukee learns that every postseason with Giannis. And Giannis is light years ahead of Ben Simmons when it comes to taking and making jump shots. So James Harden and Joel Embiid give you a chance, a legitimate chance to win the Eastern Conference Championship and maybe more. Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid, nice team, very good, but not an Eastern Conference favorite. So I gotta be honest, as much as I like Simmons and would love to see him under Doc Rivers with Embiid, I would pull the trigger. Oh. So here's, here's what I want to say about Daryl and then about the Sixers. And full disclosure, I, I really, really like Daryl, not just as a GM, as a guy. I consider Daryl a, not a close personal friend. And I'm now going to look into the camera and say this. My close personal friend, Daryl Morey, has a problem. And the problem is a lying problem. He's not always go. an honest fella when it comes to Thank you. Uh, what he may or may not do with his team. So when he says, I talked to Daryl a week ago yesterday. And I, I asked him, I was like, <laughs> listen, go. are you just going to make this? Are uh, you going to make this trade or not? And you know what he said to me? We're not trading Ben Simmons. And you know what I said to him? I think you might be lying to me, Daryl. And he said, I'm not lying to you, Nick. And I said, eh. Guess what? You're my pal. I don't really believe you. Now, I do believe he is not dead set on trading Ben Simmons. And this is why I like the Sixers position so much. And while we're not doing our NBA season preview predictions today, when we do them, I very well might have the Sixers winning the Eastern Conference because Wilds, oh. I think they have something of a free roll. I think they can start this season and say, Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, Danny Green, Tobias Harris, Joel Embiid as our starters, as, as, some legitimate depth on the bench, Dwight Howard, obviously, Theibel, Korkmaz, uh, there's an important player I'm leaving out, but regardless, I think they go nine, maybe ten deep. I think all of, oh, Shake Milton, pardon me. I think all of that, they can say, hey, under Doc Rivers, let's see how it looks. And guess what? If it doesn't look good, 
they know they can present the best package for Harden. So you try it out, you see if it works, and if it's working, great. And if not, you're going to add an MVP candidate. To me, that's a no-lose situation for the Sixers unless the Rockets call you and say, we're trading Harden today to somebody else unless you put Simmons in the deal. And I don't think that's happening. So I don't necessarily believe yeah. Daryl entirely, but I think the Sixers are in a great position. Uh, so there, there's two ways to look at Daryl's quotes. One, the most optimistic one is like, ah, it's like a fisherman's fib. It's like, how big was the fish? It's like, ah, oh, it was this big and was actually that big. The most pessimistic version is like, they're nah, just straight up lying. And fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. Because the, when Daryl traded Chris happens? Paul to the back to the thunder <laughs> he wasn't around the thunder beginning but when he traded him to the thunder chris paul's like what gives you told me last week that i wasn't being traded and he told mark spears of the undefeated hey my initial reaction i was shocked truth be told just talk to the guy said i wasn't gonna be traded that's funny because it's gonna be the headline that's just the way it is so Broussard, I think that he's eroding trust. If he if he ends up trading Ben Simmons for Harden after vociferously saying I'm not trading him, and and Broussard, we haven't even brought up out of the kindness of Nick's heart, but he also told Nick that he was going to do uh, live games on Twitch. That's another lie. Yeah. So right. between these two <laughs> things, true. he did. If tell I me was that. on the Sixers, yeah, I'd be like, did eh, tell me that. I don't know. This guy just got here. I don't know if I can take his word for you know word is bond. No, that, that's absolutely right. But here's the thing. If, to Nick's point, if the Sixers start the season with Embiid and Simmons, and it's just not working. I mean, they're pretty good, but not looking like a contender. Then you can easily make that trade for Harden. And nobody will say, well, hey, you said you wouldn't trade Simmons. You can say it wasn't working out. I will. Because there are a lot of people in Philly that think that Simmons and Embiid, while they're cordial, they get along. There's this inner competition between them that might keep them from working together, maximizing each other's ability, because each of them wants it to be their team. Each of them wants to be the superstar. You bring in Harden, he's 31 years old. He's kind of of a different generation. That's an overstatement, but you know what I yep. mean, than Joel Embiid. Yep. And NBA so it, it could yep. be more big brother. Yeah, big brother, little brother. Here's the other thing. How a lot of people are worried about how long Embiid is going to be an elite level player. He is injury prone. We know that he's never played more than 64 games. Do I have more than four years of Joel Embiid at this level left? I, I get Nick. You are absolutely right in that. Ideally, I would want to see Simmons and Embiid together at least up until the trade deadline, if not for the whole year. However, Harden might be gone by then. That's the problem. If he's gone well, by then I, and you never get a chance to get him, then you're in trouble. I don't think Raphael Stone, the GM of the Rockets, is going to, who obviously came up under Daryl, is going to trade James Harden without making one last phone call to Philly, unless all of a sudden there is a package Fair. that heretofore we had not heard about that has a player involved better That's than Ben point. Simmons. But he's not all of a sudden, you know, if Danny Ainge decides to ever actually try to win a championship post Kevin Garnett, he and will. it's like Jalen Brown, Marcus <laughs> Smart, and Picks, he's, great. he's not going to accept that trade without seeing is Ben Simmons available. So I just, I think Daryl, and again, this part is speculation. This is not from talking to Daryl at all. I, I think he knows he's not going to wake up to an, a Woj bomb. Harden's been traded to Sacramento for Buddy Heald, Marvin Bagley, and a bunch of picks. Like, God dog it, I'd have given you Ben Simmons. I think he's going to almost get right of last refusal, or first refusal, last refusal. You guys know what I mean. Yeah. And because of that, I think he can bide his time somewhat. That's fair. That's fair. Yep. Also, 